Hey everybody, it's E Chip. Uh, Robber's not here today. She's out teaching knuckleheads. And uh, so she's going to be sad she missed this, but we're going to try to get this engine back into Dyna today. So stick around. this backhoe seat frame the uh, this right here is sitting out in the weather for so many years as you can see is just really rusted it out that needs to be replaced where we can use the seat um, thankfully I ran across this piece of old swing set pipe that's about the same gauge uh, thickness and uh, same size so I'll just grind the back of this off and uh, I think I'll just uh, it's thick enough I can probably just tack it on so I'll probably just cut right here and right there rather than you know smashing this and bending it and all that kind of stuff I'll, I'll just tack it on and replace it and then uh, clean this up get it painted get ready to use so for you skeptics out there <laughs> who are not sure that a solar mobile generator can power a welder and it's done it before in fact uh, the welder was used to actually fix this trailer when we had an accident uh, in a prior video so we did it right alongside the road so anyway this is a 19.2 kilowatt uh, inverter uh, uh, generator and uh, it's got a 12 kilowatt inverter in there with six 48 volt 400 amp batteries and more than enough power to to power a simple welder and so uh, that's what I've got here just a little Lincoln tombstone welder nothing fancy but and I have a 50 amp plug right up there that I can plug into right there that I can plug into so we'll plug it in and we will actually use this welder uh, using solar power uh, It'll be it'll be pretty cool. We'll use solar power to fix dyna. In fact, all the work that's been done out here uh, involving electricity uh, for Dyna has been powered by Buzz. So this repair is brought to you by Buzz the mobile solar generator. Here's the beauty of a mobile solar generator. Buzz powering welder solar generator powering an arc welder using nothing but power from the Sun we'll show you it's a beautiful thing as you can see it's plugged into buzz right now you can hear it running at least I hope you can hear it <laughs> of course they can it's loud yeah. where are you welding right here
And there it is. Chair frame. All welded. Got the new piece of pipe on here. It's not a perfect weld, but it'll do. And I got these greased up so that they'll slide back, the chair will slide back and forth easily. And uh, we've already got the replacement fabric for this, so we'll put that together soon. Get it on the back hole. Okay, working on the body a little bit, uh, the, the frame on this thing. This uh, stabilizer has a bent ram. Um, tell by looking at it when I look that way you can see the angles off a little bit at any rate it doesn't open or close so we've got to pull this ram off get it down to the seal shop where they can hopefully straighten that ram polish it um, and uh, get a new seal kit in this thing put it back together while I'm at it I'm gonna have them uh, give me another seal kit for this ram so at some point in the future we can get that uh, rebuilt as well. I, I'm not going to mess with it right now, but at some point in the future we'll have to, so I might as well get the seal kit for it. And then also, um, uh, today the steering wheel and uh, floor, uh, some of the floorboard components I think, and then the rest of the firewall components got to go in today. So we'll do that. And one other thing we did that I didn't get video of, but can point out to you is that we straightened the uh, align the front wheels on this um, this wheel was kicked out at an angle when we got this and it's because the tie rod back there was bent a little bit so we've done some adjustment uh, and done an alignment that created a little bit of a toe in for this so it uh, should steer much better that means that we uh, pulled the front sides of the wheels in about a half inch more than the rear and uh, so that'll, that should give us decent alignment when we're trying to operate this thing. Okay, so we've got the uh, steering linkage put back and the loader uh, linkage, the transmission linkage. We've got the, the uh, shuttle drive, all of its hoses and things hooked up down there. Uh, started to work on the brake springs and things like that. I've got the throttle um, stuff installed down here. That's where the gas pedal pushes down. And... Uh, Next will be to go ahead and begin putting together the front of the engine here, uh, tighten things up really well, install that uh, hydraulic pump, and put the oil uh, cooler and radiator on top here, put the nose cone back, installed belt, fun things. All right, Robert, you ready to test the engine, see if we can get it to fire? I am. Now remember, we can't run it long because... We've just got to make, because there's no coolant hooked up or anything yet, we're just testing to make sure that it turns over, gets a spark, and can start. Tell Sorry. me when to stop pushing the you button. You got the button. You ready? Yeah. Go. Very nice. That's it? Isn't that enough? Is that what a spark sounds like? Well, that's what an engine turning over sounds like. Oh, and then it went... Well, that's just a starter disengaging because oh. it thinks the engine's going. So. Okay. But, uh, it starts. Here we go. hydraulic valves for the backhoe. <coughs> I cleaned that off today. It was really, really dirty. E Chip said not to worry about it too much because it'll just get grossed out again. <laughs> but that was my task. It looks great. And we're putting this little floor covering on. It goes right there. Time to go back on. Watch your ears. Ding, ding, ding. It's 
get some bolts in this. Made this thing work. Emergency brake. Emergency brake. And <coughs> that's all. That's enough. We tried to do some other stuff. I have to do more stuff. More stuff. Well, happy Memorial Day, everybody. It's E-Chip out at location two with an update on Dinah. As you can see, Dinah's behind me. Uh, been working away on this and I received a lot of valuable help from Chris over at Homesteading the Hard Way. I'm going to put a link uh, to his uh, YouTube page uh, down below in the description. And I encourage you to go uh, visit this man's uh, website. He's got a great family. He works on these kinds of engines for a living and uh, really knows his stuff and he's been a valuable source for me here uh, past couple of days on uh, on uh, trying to get this engine going i'm going to switch it over so you can see so i mean the engine's in i mean you've heard us try to start this thing uh, we have a problem um, we either have a serious vacuum leak or we think the carburetor's bad carburetor's down here the person we bought this backhoe from said he rebuilt the carburetor, but he, he, what it appears he did really was just sort of take it apart, throw some carburetor cleaner in there, and put it back together. Uh, we have taken it out so far and hot dipped it, uh, pulled every little piece off of it and cleaned it out really well, made sure all the little ports, orifices, and circuits are clear in there, and then put it back together. But for some reason or another, it's not getting gas up into these cylinders where the plugs are. We will uh, we'll choke this thing and gas will literally pour out of this throat down here, um, which basically is flooding the carburetor. So, and, and that means that gas should be getting up into these cylinders, but for whatever reason, it's not. Uh, the, these plugs should be wet when we pull them out after we do something like that, and they're not. So one of two things is happening here. Either there is some kind of vacuum leak in this system beginning at the carburetor and going all the way up to the engine block. Okay, That means either things are leaking in and around this intake gasket or perhaps here at this juncture, I don't know if you can see that, uh, you can't. Let me see. At this juncture here where this gasket is between the carburetor and the intake manifold uh, or the carburetor's bad and for as long as this carburetor has sat I'm inclined to believe it's bad and so is Chris over at Homesteading the hard way so I'm gonna order a brand new carburetor luckily thankfully I found a uh, carburetor that is sort of a universal fit for this engine that uh, we hope can uh, get this going we'll install it and uh, see what we can do. Um, I'm discovering that this cheap fuel, electric fuel pump that I bought is garbage. Uh, so I'll be replacing it as well. And let's see what we can do to get this thing going. I'll tell you, we're only a few days out from this property, location two, being closed on. It's been sold and uh, Dinah's got to get out of here uh, just shortly, shortly after closing. As you can see, there's a lot to be done. We're trying our best here, but I mean, it's it's challenge. And we've got to be able to get her to run so we can operate these hydraulics, button this thing up and get it out of here. And, uh, you know, it's been almost about 10 days, actually, um, trying to get this engine started since I put it in here. So this is it's really you know starting to get frustrated i understand these are old engines they're kind of temperamental and uh they um they have to have things just right sometimes in order to run on the other hand once they're running they're good tough engines that'll last you a long time and i mean they'll take a lot of abuse so um it's just getting there where we're at the question we have now is if we can't get this going are we running this thing out to contentment the way it is and going to continue to work on it and that is the question um <laughs> chris chris over at homesteading the hard way he said you know heck i'm ocd i'd do it <laughs> which i think is kind of cool i i appreciate that and you know i'm kind of i'm kind of ocd this way too i'm, I'm kind of rabid with this stuff i mean once you start a project you don't want to quit it you don't want to admit the failure <laughs> and so and so you you keep on going um Thankfully, we don't have a great deal of money in this, so we still got room. And um, 
we can uh, uh, we take it out to I don't know we'll just see I'd really like to get it running and get it uh, run in this engine run in a little bit and uh, put under a load you know maybe um, put that dipper that bucket down on the ground and not really do any work with it but at least put it under some kind of stress or pressure so we can get that engine working a little bit and make sure it's gonna hold up fine not give us any trouble so that's the goal and we will keep you updated happy Memorial Day everybody and while on the subject of Memorial Day you know, I'm thinking about folks uh, whom I love who have passed on my mother and my father and uh, another little one whom I I just can't name but uh, you know being Memorial Day I, I just want to take this opportunity publicly to to say how much I miss them how much I've loved them my dad was a uh, naval officer and uh, line officer and he was also an He's one of the first uh, people in the Navy to be involved in avionics, uh, whereas it was coming sort of into its being uh, around the beginning of the Vietnam War. And uh, so he knew a lot about electronics, he knew a lot about engines, he was a businessman, and uh, just a, a likable guy. I miss him a lot. I, I miss being able to call him for advice on things like this. And uh, so my mother, uh, she was hardworking, mother of nine kids, and uh, always busy, um, often, <laughs> often frustrated, and often, um, you know, just overwhelmed. I think uh, with having the responsibility for a family of nine kids, but you know, a woman who absolutely did her best, and uh, I love her, I miss her. I appreciate her, I think about her a lot, and um, so I hope as you watch this video you also would take a minute out to remember those who've gone whom you love, and uh, just spend a minute thinking about them and appreciating them. Okay, so we've got the uh, steering linkage put back, and the loader uh, linkage, the transmission linkage, we've got the, the uh, shuttle drive, all of its hoses and things hooked up down there. Uh, started to work on the brake springs and things like that. I've got the throttle um, stuff installed down here. That's where the gas pedal pushes down. And uh, next will be to go ahead and begin putting together the front of the engine here. Uh, tighten things up really well. Install that uh, hydraulic pump and put the oil. Uh, cooler and radiator on top here with the nose cone back installed belt fun things we're waiting on a new carburetor so I might as well do something while I'm waiting It's a lot different than when we first tore this apart. You couldn't even see down here. It was covered in so much garbage. I know. It was 
It's like we pulled this front panel off and it was just full, packed full of dirt and grease and oil and 50 years of who knows what, who knows what. I mean, this is actually a pretty good machine, really. I like the, you know, I like the simple design. It's easy, to, it's relatively easy to work on. Relatively easy to get the things, relatively. 